Thank you for your purchase of the Woodmiser LT15 Start Sawmill. Before you begin assembling your LT15, make sure no damage was done in shipment or that you are not missing any components. It will come as shown packaged on a wooden pallet. The first thing we're going to do is to remove the plastic shipping wrap from the pallet and sawmill. Next, cut the fabric straps that hold the bed sections and the head in place during travel. These can be cut using a box knife or sturdy scissors. Always make sure you have proper eye protection when you cut these bands. They will be under pressure and will jump when cut. Next, cut the strap that is locking the handle into place. Make sure the handle locks into position before continuing. While on the back side of the mill, locate and remove the shipping plate. Just below the crank handle, locate and remove the push bar. Using the same bolts that held the push bar into place, mount the push bar into the shipping plate's original position, ensuring that the push bar is just below the crank handle. On the opposite side of the head mast assembly, remove the bolt that is securing the head into place. At this time, remove all the boxes containing the mill hardware and blade. Set these aside for later use. Now you can remove the two bolts and shipping brackets holding the head to the pallet on the hand crank side of the mill. Make sure to remove both bolts and brackets. On the opposite side, remove the one bolt holding the shipping bracket to the pallet. Do not remove the shipping bracket at this time. This is a good time to remove the track wiper from its shipping location. On the other side of the bed rails, remove the clamps from the shipping location. First, loosen the bolt securing the clamps in place. Cut any existing zip ties and pull the clamp free from the bed rail. Set these aside for later use. The next step is to remove the complete head and mast assembly from the pallet. The required weight capacity of the equipment to lift this is 800 pounds minimum. This can be done with a forklift, hoist, or crane. Slowly start lifting the head. If it is not balanced, then lower and reposition to make sure it is properly balanced. Once the head is lifted high enough, to clear the bed section, move it to a safe location until the bed assembly has been completed. Now it's time to assemble the bed. Remove the two bolts holding the top bed section into place. Be careful, the bed section will drop several inches once these are removed. Each bed section weighs about 160 pounds. With two people, Lift each bed section and position on a flat surface. For the last bed section, remove the four bolts securing the last bed section to the pallet. Lift the bed section and place on a flat surface. The bed sections can be placed in any order as long as their side supports are located on the same side. Before attaching the beds together, install the leveling legs. Notice the square nut goes on first and is positioned about midway down the threaded part of the leg. Once this is on, insert the leg into the bracket that is welded to the bed frame. Then install the hex head to the top part of the leg. To tighten or readjust the leg, use a 1 and 5 16 inch wrench. Once you have the first one completed, continue and install the rest of the leveling legs. Readjustment may be required once the mill is completely assembled and set up in the desired sawing location. The bed should be approximately level for ease of operation and each leveling leg should be supporting bed weight. 
Next, pull two bed sections together. Make sure the alignment pins go inside the tubes. Insert the provided hex head bolt into the holes in the two cross members. These will use nylock hex nut. The bolts go on each side of both main bed rails. It takes two three-quarter inch wrenches to tighten these four bolts. Next, install the main rail coupler. First, make sure the rails are tight against each other. If not, loosen one of the rails so that it will slide. Loosening the eight bolts that hold the rails onto the main tube will allow this adjustment to be made. Then install the connecting coupler using two hex head bolts. Gently tap the coupler using a rubber mallet to start into the holes provided. Tighten the hex head bolts evenly until snug. If the rail was loosened, retighten those eight bolts at this time. Next, install the head assembly onto the bed assembly. Lift and align the head assembly over the bed. The two locking pins will need to be pulled out to let the head assembly go down against the main bed rail. Once in place, remove the lower mast retaining bracket and shipping bracket from its packing position. Using the same hex head bolts and flat washers, reinstall the lower mast retaining bracket as shown. This bracket serves to secure the mast to the outer rail of the saw bed. The bracket should not actually contact the bed at any point. Then install felt rail wipers using the hex head bolt with flat washer and nuts. Make sure to pour Dextron 3 transmission fluid onto these felt wipers before installation. The felt wiper should be snug against the bed tube. Before installing the track wiper, remove the hex head bolts and flat washers from the inside of the head mast assembly. When you're ready to install the wiper, pour some Dextron 3 ATF transmission fluid onto the felt part of the wiper. This will keep the rail clean and lubricated. This will be held into place by using those previously removed hex head bolts and flat washers. Next, install the track scrapers to each end of the head assembly by using the provided hex head bolts and flat washers. As you tighten with a 9-16 inch wrench, make sure each scraper is firmly against the rail. This will help prevent sawdust from building up on the rail and the bed tube. Next, install the two end stops using the provided hex head bolt, flat washer, and nylon nut. Ensure that the one inch spacer is placed between the end stop and the mounting plate as shown. Repeat for the second end stop at the opposite end of the bed rail. Cut the straps holding the water tubes to the head of the sawmill. Take the clear water tube and push it onto the spout of the white water container. Now we can place the log clamps back onto the sawmill. Make sure they are between two cross sections that have no side support present. Using the same bolts that held the clamps while shipping, place the clamps into the pre-drilled holes. Tighten the bolts on the clamp, ensuring that the clamp rests against the sawmill as shown. When installing the blade, always make sure to wear gloves and safety glasses. Open the two blade wheel covers and insert the blade. Make sure the blade is on the outside of the two blade wheels and under both blade guides. Once the blade is in position, tension the blade by rotating the blade tension handle counterclockwise until it is locked into position. Ensure that the end of the alignment bracket is aligned with the washer. If not, untension the blade, rotate the bolt slightly, and retension the blade. Repeat this process until the alignment is achieved.
Lastly, remove the sawdust guide from its packaging position and using the same bolts and nuts, reattach it facing in the opposite direction so that the sawdust is guided toward the floor. Congratulations, you have now completed the assembly of your LT15 sawmill. If you have any further questions, refer to your manual or review this DVD again. If you have any questions not answered by either of these, please feel free to call our customer service department for assistance.